Now I'm fixing to head up here to Piedmont. Check and see what kind of art there is. Uh, see if there's any kind of entertainment. You want weird stuff? <laughs> oh, you know, like a cat down here. Let it drink. The most benefit. An analysis from the Wall Street Journal says so far, foreign companies are among the biggest winners. The law spurred over 200 clean energy projects, totaling at least 110 billion investment dollars altogether. But over 60% of the spending involves foreign companies, including China, Japan, and South Korea. One example is Japan's Panasonic. It's projected to get over $2 billion in tax credits. That's based on its production capacity. Panasonic runs a lithium-ion battery plant in Nevada, is building another in Kansas, and eyeing a possible third on U.S. soil. Even though Biden's Signature Act looks to shore up domestic green energy, right now foreign companies dominate the realm. From raw materials to finished parts and EV batteries to solar panels. Over $8 billion investment dollars sparked by the law come from Chinese companies or companies with deep ties to China. And I think it's fair to say that this is not enhancing competition with China. If anything, it's simply mimicking particular policies that China itself has followed in terms of trying to subsidize and promote particular sectors of economic growth. Many are watching to see if Washington can close the loopholes. The Treasury Department is working on the rules for giving out EV tax credits. It has floated the idea of disqualifying certain cars from tax credits if they use battery materials made by Chinese companies. The Big Apple is signing off of TikTok. The New York City Mayor's Office just updated the bio of its official account on the platform with this message. This account was operated by NYC until August 2023. It's no longer monitored. Let's dive in. Now well, this is nice. Monroe and Park Drive. There's not one wheelchair ramp in this entire intersection. Nowhere. And I'm going that way. In the street. As usual, just can't get on a, can't use a wheelchair ramp. Ain't one. Got to deal with all this crazy traffic. It brings significant benefits, including streamlined access to public and private online services all over Europe. The idea is that we could have a digital identity that would enable us to have an e-wallet for things, such as a health insurance card, medical certificates, a national ID card, and a credit card. This is presented by the European Commission as a simplification, which is, of course, intended to make life easier and more pleasant. In the UK, this digital transformation has been advocated by former Prime Minister Tony Blair. A poll by The Times earlier this year suggests that over 80% of Brits are supportive of a digital ID for all citizens. Editorialist and publisher Eric Virag says the project of a European digital identity brings up several questions. What will this mean for privacy, security and individual identity? The European Commission's plan is to change our individual identity. We will no longer be identified through our state, our nation. We will be identified as being part of the European Union, and we don't even know whether our German, French, or Greek nationality will continue. We will have a European identity. Despite these concerns, the EU is pushing forward with its vision. Well, the Lord. is spending around £40 million pounds on pilot projects. They aim to test the digital wallet in real-world scenarios. Virag says another concern is that the digital identity framework is largely a brainchild of the EU Commission. While the European Parliament and the EU Council have made modifications during negotiations with the Commission, none of the member countries' populations have been consulted. 
but it's the EU citizens who will live with these new rules. Sheep. In reality, what is at stake is the creation of a European civil registry. The digital wallet was not provided for in any treaty. It has been decided in this totally authoritarian way, and no one has consulted the people of Europe to find out whether they agree. The European Commission has not said to us, do you agree that your banking data should be grouped together with your civil status and health data? We think you're sheep. With the complicity of some governments that have not consulted their populations to find out whether they agree. Not prepared uh, for a big fire. That the, the wildlife wildfire management systems that were in place uh, basically failed. That the state uh, failed to put in place uh, the actual uh, forest management policies that would have actually reduced the amount of brush, the amount of uh, consumable uh, fuel that was is important for a massive wildfire to take place. Uh, especially in the last few years, as, as the sugarcane industry has dried up and grass has come in, uh, those policies need to be put in place years ago, and they really failed to do that, which caused these huge fires. Do you have any sense of why those policies weren't implemented, as you say? I think, unfortunately, one of the huge uh, pushes uh, in Hawaii was to go to go green, which was to go renewable. Uh, there was actually legislation, the Hawaii legislator, legislature mandated that uh, the Hawaiian Electric would have to go 100% renewable by 2045. So, of course, the utility company decided to invest all of its resources uh, into going green into those renewables instead of uh, uh, wildfire management. In fact, in the last uh, three years, they only invested uh, just under $250,000 in uh, forest management, in uh, a wildfire prevention, which, of course, is very much undercutting, which was I think a, a risk that they had been warned about for years in the state that this could be this is, could be what happens. How do you see a solution going forward? I think, unfortunately, in the case of Hawaii, much has been devastated. It's going to take many, many years for for the state to recover from this. I think this is a lesson for other states that are in, in regions where there is, I think, long-term dry conditions where there is a lot of fuel that's built up. I mean, we've seen huge fires. In California, we've seen big ones in Canada. We've seen them now in Hawaii. I think it really it requires, I think, a concerted effort uh, to deal in in forest management and in, in the management of the land that we have. I think that's a it's a it's an old lesson that I think is certainly in the United States we used to be much better at. I think we've got we've gotten worse. I think the idea that this is climate change is honestly a distraction from the very real issues that now face legislatures and, and companies and businesses that now must deal with. Uh, the fact that they have many forests that are and in, in, in grasslands that are out of control and, and causing these huge fires. Jarrett Sutman, columnist for the Daily Signal and author of The War on History, The Conspiracy to Rewrite America's Past. Thank you so much. See, NTD's Christina Corona has more. On Thursday, Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass, along with local law enforcement officials, announced the development of a new task force to crack down on retail thefts. What we've seen over just the past week in the city of Los Angeles and in cities and areas surrounding us is unacceptable, and today we are here to announce regional action. Today we're here to announce multi-agency organized retail crimes task force those who commit these crimes will be caught, they will be held accountable, and we will work to address this issue. The new task force plans to hold criminals accountable in the L.A. region. This task force will respond in an organized manner, day and night, seven days a week, with the full scope of investigative resources to compile evidence for successful filings and prosecutions. And not just of those people stealing this merchandise, but of those that are buying and selling this merchandise. And yesterday, the Glendale Police Department announced their first arrest related to the YSL flash mob burglary at the Americana at Brand Shopping Center in Glendale on August 8th. The thieves overwhelmed the store and ultimately fled with over $400,000 in merchandise. An individual by the name of I Ivan Isaac Ramirez, a 23-year-old resident, of the city of Los Angeles. He is currently being processed at the Glendale Police Department and is in our custody. A second suspect, Brianna Jimenez, 21 years old, also of the city of LA, is currently being sought by detectives and has an active arrest warrant uh, again for her arrest. 
Then on Wednesday, six people were arrested in connection with the Nike store robbery in East L.A. that occurred on August 12th, stealing about $1,000 worth of shoes and merchandise. If the public has any information on thefts, the community is urged to call a new hotline at 811-374-9420. Christina Corona, NTD News, Los Angeles. Investigation. They've been charged with civil rights violations in efforts to get higher wages. They tried to get a pay raise and lied on reports to cover up the use of excessive force. The investigation centered on the police departments in Antioch and Pittsburgh. The indictment document showed text messages and photos of the beaten individuals. Uh, the injuries it showed training day. canine bites and scars, bruises and cuts from dangerous weapons. These crimes were reportedly committed between July 2019 to October 2021. Charges include wire fraud, deprivation of rights under color of law, conspiracy against rights, and conspiracy to distribute anabolic steroids. But the Pittsburgh police said they're also cooperating with investigators. Coming up, the Philadelphia 76... ...burning a hole in the ozone layer. But now we're being told that we may actually need to spray the aerosols right into the stratosphere to block out the sun and now the problem is carbon carbon like us we're living under global boiling extreme heat it's irregular weather surely soon it's going to kill us all the only thing the way the only way to save the human race they claim is by well granting our elected leaders or even the unelected leaders the ultimate power to remake everything truly they have the knowledge that we all lack the cognitive ability to steer the world from this disaster. It would be a Green New Deal, a Great Reset, an agenda for 2030 with sustainable development goals, a reimagining of the entire world because climate change, right? In other words, we're told there's an unavoidable crisis. The nature of this crisis and the facts keep changing. They keep getting proven false. And what do they do? Well, they take those things and they turn them right around and flip the narratives. But the overall solution, most importantly, the agenda for it all, that really, that really actually stays pretty much the same. To solve it, we're told there needs to be a new authoritarian power capable of remaking society, micromanaging our lives, changing the way we eat, how we travel, how we live, and right now, there are groups pressing President Joe Biden to seize that power. This is the national climate emergency. Now, look, you wouldn't be wrong to think you already declared this. There were actually news reports just recently alleging that Biden had, in fact, declared it. But there's actually some nuance to it that's important. Let me explain. Now, during a national press trip at the Grand Canyon on August 9th, President Joe Biden gave an interview with the Weather Channel. Watch. Mr. President, you call climate change a code red for humanity. The World Health Organization said it will cause an additional quarter of a million deaths a year starting in 2030. Are you prepared to declare a national emergency with respect to climate change? We've already done that. Nationally, we've conserved more land. We've moved and we've rejoined the Paris Climate Accord. We passed a $368 billion climate control facility. We're, we're, we're moving. It is, the, it is the existential threat to humanity. So you've already declared that national emergency. Well, in the practice, we have a bug on it. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. So you've already declared that national emergency. Practically speaking, yes. Yeah. Now, if you were to watch that, you could easily think that Biden actually did, in fact, declare a national emergency on climate change. The reality with it is that he came close. He's been doing a lot on it, but he didn't take the final step that it seems that the media establishment is just salivating for. The key word here is when he said, practically speaking, he has declared a climate emergency. Let me set the scene. This goes back to July 20th of last year. President Biden announced an executive action to respond to the alleged extreme heat and to boost offshore wind. It included $2.3 billion to FEMA, that's the Federal Emergency Management Agency. That's why today I'm making the largest investment ever, $2.3 billion. 
help communities across the country build infrastructure that's designed to withstand the full range of disasters we've been seeing to, up to today. Extreme heat, drought, flooding, hurricanes, tornadoes. Now, personally, I'd wonder where FEMA is with the fires in Maui, but hey, that's just me. The program notably also includes programs for more air conditioners, offshore wind farms, and actually a lot of other policies as well. For the first time, states will be able to use federal funds to pay for air conditioners in homes. I'm also proud to point out that my administration approved the first commercial project for offshore wind in America. What was really interesting, though, was how the media establishment reacted to it. When they were gearing up for Biden's big announcement, they played it hard. The Washington Post had said before this that Biden was considering an emergency declaration on the climate. Democrats were calling for it. New York Times even alleged that Biden's agenda on climate change, they said it had collapsed, and that he would then seek a more extreme option, notably to bypass Republicans in Congress. The narratives and other news outlets were actually pretty similar to that. And it looked like they were all hoping for an emergency declaration. Now, the backdrop for that expected declaration came a week before. Biden was pushing to enact his domestic agenda on climate change. Closed discussions had been heated. Democrats looked like they had the votes, and they were planning to throw out the filibuster to pass the agenda without needing a single Republican. But then something unexpected happened. Senator Joe Manchin, a Democrat, backed out, although notably he later reversed course. But that loss of that single vote meant they could not push it through. And so they turned to the next prospect, an emergency declaration. They said this would give the Biden administration the power to enact the agenda. But interestingly, Biden's executive action ended up not doing that. I mean, not quite at least. And the disappointment among the establishment was palpable. Biden's executive action was followed by the so-called Inflation Reduction Act. <laughs> Let me explain that. It was just a couple months later in August. It was passed under the label of reducing inflation. In reality, what did it do? It gave around $375 billion to programs on climate change and energy. This covered the estimated $300 billion that would have been needed for Biden's Build Back Better agenda on clean energy. In other words, it was Build Back Better disguised as a bailout, essentially. Now, the journal Nature actually even reported on that. They said that these massive programs managed to push through something they said, quote, might bring the United States within range of meeting its climate com uh, commitments. And it was even framed as the single largest thing that Congress had ever done on climate change. But get this, even that was not enough for the establishment. Now, after all this, a group of eight Democrat senators issued a public letter to Biden. This was October 4th, 2022. They framed those hundreds of billions of dollars in that Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA, as just the start. They said, quote, we need to build off the momentum from the, IR, from the IRA to make sure that we achieve the ambition this crisis requires and what we have promised the world. And they add this, quote, we urge you to act boldly, declare this crisis the national emergency that it is, and embark upon significant regulatory and administrative action. Now, Biden's recent interview with the Weather Channel can be interpreted in this context, was one of the big questions asked to him. That was the one they were sending everywhere. The establishment is pressing Biden on taking that step. They want an emergency declaration. Now, look, let's step back from all of it. Let's have a look. All the money, all the programs, all of it, technically they got a gift basket of everything they wanted. And apparently that's still not enough. It raises the question then, what do they actually want? What would an emergency declaration give them that the new policies and the literal hundreds of billions of dollars could not give them? Well, it looks like the only thing they didn't get in all that is power, centralized power. And in particular, the power to do whatever they want 
without having Republicans or even Democrat defectors stand in their way. They could end industries. They could remake America. Biden could reroute funds to fight the climate emergency without needing approval from Congress. Yeah. How's that for your democracy? There's single family homes, the need to phase these out for shared dwellings because, well, they're just inefficient. Having your own home with a yard, they say, isn't good for the environment. In other words, just about everything is encompassed under the climate change narrative. And an emergency declaration to manage everything defined under the climate change narrative would give the establishment the power to manage just about everything. All right, stay tuned after the break. A legal case could decide whether the government can censor Americans. And the Biden administration right now is fighting to have these tools. Stick around, we'll talk more. It's decreased, although your income increases yearly. Inflation is eating away at your wealth. Digital wallets in the central.